As anglers, we all have a weird admiration for the aesthetic appearance of the fish we're trying to catch. The closer you look at the detail and the texture of the skin, the more you see. And there are four layers above the muscle tissue of these fish, and they all play a different role. Over the next few minutes, I'm going to explain a little bit more about these layers and why the fish have them. The first line of the fish's defence is the layer of protective mucus. The mucus is far more than the external lubricant that allows them to effortlessly glide through the water. It's full of anti-pathogen chemicals. The mucus serves the purpose similar to how snot serves us in capturing viruses and disease to protect us from infection. It forms part of the non-specific immune system, meaning that the safe chemicals are combined to create a lethal mix which will kill all good and bad pathogens without any specific target. Riverine species like bream and roach are sensitive to all external stresses, so they have a thick layer of mucus to help them cope with their variable environment where they're naturally exposed to more external threats than fish in all still waters. Research Research suggests that fish upstream and closer to the water source produce less mucus than populations at the lower reaches of the river system. This is because the water quality closer to source is far better quality and purity than the water at the lower reaches. Water further down the river system obviously picks up more and more bacteria and viruses in the form of pollution, runoff and water discharge. Therefore, the further down the water course you get, the more external challenges there are for the fish populations and therefore the fish will respond by producing more mucus to strengthen their antifungal and antibacterial defences. These non-specific defences of the fish are unaffected by water temperature. The layer below the mucus is called the epidermis. This layer contains goblet cells. These are the pores which produce the mucus. Most fish will continue to produce mucus, shedding the excess into the water in an effort to clean themselves and remove unwanted external parasites. And then we have the dermis layer. This is the layer where scales are formed which function as physical plates of armour that protect the lower layers of tissue. The dermal layer of skin, including the scales, contains chromatophores, which are the pigment containing cells which give the fish their coloration. Scales also act as a calcium reservoir which the fish can mobilise in the event of nutritional calcium deficiency. We've all seen lifted scales, particularly on mirror carp, and you've probably spent time drying the area to apply antiseptic treatment to the wound. But a healthy fish will regenerate that scale in a matter of weeks. And I've already explained the natural antiseptic properties of a healthy fish, so drying the wound and applying antiseptic can be counterproductive, but we'll come back to this point later. Below the dermis is a layer called the hypodermis. This connects the dermis to muscle tissues. The hypodermis contains sensory receptors, blood vessels, and energy storing fat cells. If the hypodermic layer gets damaged, then the first line of the fish's defense has been breached, which creates a potential site of infection. And now it's time for the second line of defense to come into play. The second line of defense, I'm sure you've all become familiar with how the specific immune system works with the COVID pandemic, but I'll give a brief explanation of this defense system, which is also utilized by fish as their second line of defense. A response from the specific immune system involves the recognition of pathogens, which send white blood cells to the site of infection. The white blood cells produce small proteins called antibodies. These will form a shape to fit the antigen to eliminate it. The antibodies remember the shape of the antigen and become far more efficient next time they encounter it. The specific immune system is less effective in cold water temperatures, although bacteria and virus are also less active the threat of infection is far lower. However, the bacteria are fast to reproduce as water temperatures warm up, whereas the fish's immune system is a little slower to respond, which is why the spring is the most vulnerable time for fish regarding bacterial infections. The other time that the immune system is less effective is after capture. When fish are stressed, they produce a stress hormone called cortisol. Cortisol helps fish get through stressful periods by shutting down essential systems, including the immune system. With this in mind, we can link what we've learned here to the impact of anglers on fish condition. If we start with the scenario of carp angling, it questions the benefit of spending time to apply antiseptic to a wound particularly if mucus has these antiseptic properties. Surely keeping the fish out of water, dabbing the wound dry to remove the mucus is extending this period of stress, which then makes fish more reliant on those artificial antiseptics. My personal opinion is if you can minimize stress on the fish and preserve the natural defenses of the fish, then that's far more beneficial than spending time preparing wounds for treatment. 
This further strengthens our argument as to why we encourage anglers to deal with their catch in the water to protect that mucus, only removing fish if absolutely necessary, because removing that fish will cause physical damage to the external mucus, which as we've learned is the first line of defense and a key part of the non-specific immune system. And the impact of this stress is further weakening the specific immune system, therefore making the fish more vulnerable to infection thereafter. Now let's look at how these systems might be affected in the scenario of match angling. Although match venues are higher stock and generally more stressful environments for fish, each fish is usually dealt with and returned far quicker than they are by specimen carp anglers. However, in a match scenario, the fish are then stored in a keep net after capture. This is where the stressful event is extended and where the first line of the defence is compromised with the removal of mucus at the weigh-in before being released back into the stressful environment of that high stock commercial venue. So the specific immune system is constantly weakened with that production of this stress hormone cortisol which is only briefly produced at the time of capture in the scenario of carp fishing. I personally think the efficiency of the immune system is crucial in the protection of fish condition and key to the repair of each hook hold. If fish stress is kept to a minimum then the specific immune system will function well and strengthen time after time. If the fish are exposed to a stressful living environment then cortisol will be produced more frequently therefore weakening the immune system and allowing infection to compromise the successful repair of mouth tissues. This infection will lead to scar tissue upon scar tissue with poor repair and ultimately lead to deformed mouths. So reduce that stress in your fisheries and make anglers more responsible for the safety of their catch and the preservation of the mucus. You will have healthier immune responses of both the specific and non-specific immune systems. So there you go, a bit more of a technical video this one. I hope you found it interesting, a bit more science involved and I hope I've not overcomplicated it. But make sure you're following in our pages we've got more like this to come more in the schedule so hit that subscribe button and follow our instagram and facebook pages and you won't fail to learn more and more about fishery management i hope you like it leave a comment like share and subscribe thank you